Hello, my name is Mimi Graney and I'm the Downtown Coordinator for the City of Chelsea. And tonight I'm here with Arnie Jarmack, who is the former photographer for the Chelsea Record. And he has got a new, very exciting show of uh, some of his photographs from the 1970s and 1980s here in Chelsea that are going to be on display at Gallery 456, which is the storefront gallery at 456 Broadway. So thank you so much, Arnie, for coming tonight. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, you were the photographer for the Chelsea Record. Tell me a little bit about what that role was. Um, I was hired by Andrew Quigley, who was the publisher of the Chelsea Record. Um, the Chelsea Record, when I worked there, came out every day, five days a week. It was a daily newspaper. And my job as a photographer was to cover government affairs, um, school functions, uh, police and fire news, and just kind of general assignments that they would uh, assign to me. So about how many photographs would you have to deliver every day? It um, varied. Um, when you work at a daily newspaper, and the daily newspapers in Chelsea, sometimes it's hard to fill the newspaper up with news. So the publisher would keep a bunch of my photographs on his desk as well, just kind of pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. So it varied from day to day. It depended on how many newsworthy items there were. But I generally had, uh, I was at City Hall almost every day mm -hmm. um, because there was always something going on. So where was your office for the Chelsea Record back then? It was on 4th Street. Well, actually, it, it uh, changed a few times, but we settled into uh, 4th Street. So what year did you start and what year did you wrap up? I was hired in uh, 1977, and I worked till the end of the 80s, about 12 years. So back in that day, it wasn't taking a picture in your phone and texting it off to your <laughs> editor. Well, I see you brought your camera. Tell me a little bit about the camera and I was uh, the, the was. last of an era of film photographers who worked for uh, newspapers. So I use this Nikon F right here. This is a 1973 Nikon F. And I shot a 35 millimeter film, which I had to develop and dry and then uh, print a uh, print. Mm. So it was a little bit of a different process than it is today. So how long from start to finish, from the moment you snapped the picture, for you to develop it, print it, get it to the... If we had a hard news item, I could produce a print within about 25 or 30 minutes. But normally I would go in at night and I would develop my film and then I would hang it up and let it dry. And then when I would come in in the morning, the paper, the Chelsea Record came out in the afternoon around 12 or 12.30. So I would come in at around 9 or 9.30 in the morning and I would print the uh, pictures mm. um, at that point. So um, you said you, it sounds like you covered everything from big events in the city to small little things. Uh, that was the, uh, the beauty of the, the job, why it was so alluring and why I loved the job so much. Um, Chelsea was such a small city that you got to know everyone um, really, really well. And then my job, there weren't a lot of photographers at the newspaper. And uh, so I got to cover just about everything. Mm -hmm. It was really... Um, a fascinating and unbelievable experience. So I, I remember when we were talking earlier, you talked a little bit about you felt like you were the eyes of the city. Sort of. When I would go to a city hall and I would photograph a, um, um, a government function or a meeting, I really felt that right standing right behind me was everyone who lived in the city of Chelsea and their vision was just coming right through me and coming right through that lens in front of my camera. So. I had that uh, responsibility to portray the current events that were going on in the city and interpret them for the people of Chelsea. Mm. It was a responsibility that I took seriously. Were there times where people didn't want to have their picture taken, but you felt like it was important to capture that? Absolutely. Do you have a story connected with that? Um, you know, I had people threaten to um, push me off the street with a bulldozer if I didn't take my camera and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody really was against it, we usually didn't uh, take it. But when I was covering city uh, uh, functions, um, I didn't let anyone stop me. I mean, I, I had a responsibility. So, But there were some people who didn't want their picture taken. But if you're in the public domain and you're a public official and you're at a public meeting at City Hall, mm -hmm. you really can't say, don't take my picture. So of the photos that you're going to be showing as part of this exhibit, um, give me a little sense of what's the overall 
Is there a theme to it? Uh, what's the sort of background? What made you choose these particular photos? You know, I took these pictures a long time ago, and I went on and did something different with my life, and I put these photographs in a box, and they sat there for 35 years. And I took them out and started printing them, and I found that I really loved them. And I really loved them when I took them. Um, so I have 20,000 negatives, so when you exhibit, yeah. you say, well, what am I going to exhibit? I mean, there's just so many photographs. So you try to come up with a criteria that will um, enhance the experience for the people who look at them. And then I've tried a bunch of different things. I've exhibited them a few times. And what I've always come down to is just to put up the ones that I really love. Mm -hmm. So that's the determining factor, the ones that I really love. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the photos that I know okay. we're going to be doing. So um, there's this one, The Last House on 3rd Street, which is the, uh, the last house on 3rd Street. It's this lonely house out in a field. What's the story behind this one? This, there was a fire in Chelsea um, before I came to work at the Chelsea Record, and an entire ward of a city burnt down. That's the great one. The fire 1973. 73. And this is the last house that was left after all was said and done, and it's indicative of the ward was full of old three-deckers uh, like that. And it's just such a stark image because when it was in its life, it was surrounded with houses that looked like that and people who lived in those houses. So, I mean, this is the last remnant of an era, and it's so stark because the uh, house is just standing all by itself. And it was a cold, snowy morning. I remember walking to take that picture. It was bitter cold, and when I walked on the snow, I could hear it crunching. Mm. It was like being on a moonscape almost. I love that you included your own shadow in this one. Right. I mean, um, when you take photographs, um, early morning has long shadows and late afternoon has long shadows. And if you learn how to um, incorporate those into your images, they can be a dramatic effect as it is in this one. Mm. I love it really kind of captures the sense of your role as witness to this moment in time and this last house standing. Yeah, very much. I, I mean, that, we ran that picture in the uh, newspaper and it, um, it was well received because at the time, the people who were looking at the Chelsea record in the 1970s and 80s were really familiar with that event, the fire. They had been here and they lived through it, mm. you know, and this was their city and that was what was left. Mm. It touched a chord with a lot of people. Yeah. I think one of the things that strikes me in the, the series of photos is the sense of loss, of uh, sort of the looking back with a sense of nostalgia and, and seeing the changes in the, in the community. Do you feel that yourself looking at them now? Absolutely. I mean, uh, when I was a young man learning my craft, there were a few photographers whose work um, made an impression on me. And one of them was a photographer by the name of Walker Evans, who was a great documentary photographer. And his job, the pictures that I love that he took, he took in the Depression. And he was hired by the government to go around and photograph people during the Depression. And the feelings that you get from his images, I, I just always love them. And I think it comes through in some of the pictures I took. Mm. So this other one, it's sort of an older woman sort of cracking her fingernail or knuckles a little bit, leaning off a back porch uh, with her head in a scarf. Do, do you remember the story behind this one? I do uh, very, very well. I mean, I, I was just kind of walking around Chelsea with my camera taking photographs, and I walked in between where the back rows of the houses come together, and this woman was standing on the porch, and I started taking photographs of her, and I spent... I don't know, maybe five minutes taking photographs, and we never spoke mm. the whole time that I was there. It was kind of like a, a, a little bit of a dance. Um, I don't think she spoke English, um, and um, to me it was just a really powerful um, image, and I think she kind of felt it as well because she is very, her presence is very strong in that image. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you cap captured a lot of portraits, even though you were sort of a traditional news photographer. Um, 
it's interesting sort of saying like it being this little dance and sort of that sense of intimacy that you created. Um, did you find that you did that in all of your... Um, when I look back at the photographs, some of the ones that I really love are really the portraits. Mm. Um, Chelsea was a city full of amazing uh, people. And in my position working for the newspaper, I got to meet a lot of them. And because I worked for the newspaper, everyone in town knew me. And like the young children in the city used to see me, and they'd say, hey, mister, take my picture. Put me in the Chelsea record. Yeah. And I used to leave the Chelsea record. I lived down on Pembroke Street. And I used to walk home, and I would walk through different neighborhoods with my Nikon camera. And I used to feel like the Pied Piper sometimes, because kids would come out of everywhere going, hey, mister, take my picture. And uh, I always loved taking those pictures. And then my publisher, Andrew Quigley, who owned the Chelsea record, always loved putting them in the paper. And I, I got to say, none of these pictures would have been possible without Andrew Quigley, who owned a newspaper and who really loved the city of Chelsea yeah. and really supported and loved the photographs that I took, even though he used to um, have a lot of fun with me saying, oh boy, another great Jarmack photograph, and roll his <laughs> eyes. But then when I would leave the room, he would put it on the front page. Oh, that's great. I yeah. love your story of saying that he liked having lots of pictures of kids in the newspaper because it would, you know, he'd sell a couple dozen photos for the whole family had to get a copy of that. I'd come in with a picture of a tree or the sky or something and he'd go, oh boy, another great Chimac photo. Can't you take pictures of 20 kids because they all have aunts, they all have grandmothers, they all have nieces and sisters mm -hmm. and it would sell more uh, photographs. So you spend a lot of time at school recitals, I imagine, and things like that. So here's another great one with the uh, the front of the Chelsea, uh, one of the fire trucks. That's a 1940s era America La, La France, beautiful, beautiful engine. And when I came here in the 70s, it was being used by the city of Chelsea. Wow, 30 years later. 30 years later. So as we all know, Chelsea has a great fire department, a great esprit de corps. I was the fire department photographer for a few years, uh, Chief Fothergill at the time asked me to do that and um, I really, um, the, the camaraderie, the um, excellence, the tremendous professional skills of the Chelsea Fire Department, I was in awe of being just a small part of it. They were a great group of men who, if I were in a house and the house was burning, I'd want the Chelsea Fire Department knocking down the door trying to save on me, just mm -hmm. a very professional organization. And, I love taking pictures, the fire department and the engines, especially that one. Mm. So you captured a, a number of photos of people at work, whether it was cab drivers or uh, politicians or firemen. Um, what, what is it about sort of the people at work in Chelsea that drew your eye? Well, um, one of the photographers whose work really spoke to me was a photographer by the name of Lewis Hine. And he photographed children working in factories, and he also photographed men at work. So if you, in addition to telling and working at the Chelsea Record, I had a, a burning desire to be a documentarian of life and to create a record of life and how people work and how they earn their living and what they do in their life is an important part of a society and so taking pictures of people at work mm. is a vital part of if you want to tell a record mm. of how a society organizes itself. And uh, going back to sort of the, uh, Andrew Quigley liking having all, lots of photos of kids in the paper, you, you captured them at play, you captured them. They're just that photograph out. was actually taken in Quigley Park. Ah. Which was named after Mr. Quigley's father. So uh, this is the one of the kids jumping rope, probably a you know, almost a half dozen kids all at once. To me, that, that was such a beautiful picture because if you look in the background of the photograph, you see where the children lived. So it, it tells a little bit of a story of who they are, what they're doing, but it gives you the context of their uh, life and where they lived their life and mm. a little bit of the history of the city through its architecture. So looking at the, uh, at the city today, what's some of your feelings about how the 
the city's changed. Are, when you're looking back now, do you feel a sense of nostalgia, a sense of... Physically, the city hasn't changed. The, those houses are still there. I mean, there's new parts of Chelsea with its high rises and hotels and in areas that were barren and empty when I was photographing, so that's different. But the streets that make up Chelsea, like your Watt Street and your Maverick Street and your Suffolk Street and your Essex Street, your Bloomingdale Street, those streets are all very, very similar to when I took them, mm -hmm. pictures, you know, all that time ago. Yeah. Um, so what's the, the life of your photographs now, now that you've opened up those boxes and are taking prints? <laughs> Um, they've taken on a life of their own. I mean, I first exhibited at the Chelsea Art Walk, I think in 2014, and I've done three Chelsea Art Walks since then, and it's exciting to me to have people come and look at them from the city and them images be so important and vital to people and have people tell me that they really love these pictures and it's a story of their life. Um, so. We're planning on doing a book, and we're planning. I have an exhibit planned at a museum in Boston next year. Which uh, the exhibit? McMullen Museum of Art at Boston College mm. has decided to give me a show in 2019. So these pictures I took for the Chelsea Record 40 years ago are going to hang in a museum of art. To me, it's just unbelievably exciting. You probably didn't think that you'd be. Uh in such grand locations back in 77. Well, I had hopes, but uh, the reality uh, wasn't quite, didn't catch up. It took 40 years for my reality to happen. So, so all those eye rolls about the great <laughs> photographs, they proved him wrong. Right. Well, I think Mr. Quigley, he uh, really loved the pictures. He knew there was something special about them. Mm. Yeah. And you said you're working on a book as well. What's that about? Um, well, um, I've thought that my image, I wasn't a classically trained photographer. I didn't get an MFA at Rhode Island School of Design or anything like that. So my images to me have value as um, a document of American life. And I think they'll be really more valuable 100 years from when I took them. Today's 40 years, so they're gaining a little bit. So I have a plan to do a five volume set of photographs of the city of Chelsea, one that will be designed not for current consumption or marketability, but one that will be a document of life in the city and people a hundred years from now will be able to open it up and mm. say, oh my goodness, did they really do things that way? <laughs> yeah. um, and then so the beauty of it, working at the newspaper was I have uh, all facets of life. I really have a tremendous story of an American city in the 1970s and 1980s. Mm. It was a great opportunity. And when people see your photographs, what's some of the ways that they react to them typically, other than just... Well, I had really one wondering. girl say, that was me when I was nine years old. Wow. Um, and that was really fun. That was unplanned. So, I mean, the first Chelsea Art Walk we did, um, I think I exhibited 12 or 13 photographs, and we had three people come up during the show that weren't scripted or anything and said, that's me when I was young. Mm. So, I mean, that, that was a real tr treat for them and for me as well. Yeah. I, I love the sort of poetic turnaround because you've got such great photos of sort of the downtown of, you know, people shopping, the, some of the old facades to think that you've now got a, a show inside one of those businesses. Yeah, it's, it's really alive. appealing to me to have this show in this building on Broadway because I spent so much time photographing within about a hundred feet of that. I mean, every single day, mm -hmm. the newspaper was one less than a block away. And I was always walking to City Hall every single day, maybe two or three times a day. So I walked by this uh, storefront. Mm. So somebody who's uh, seen an evolution in newspapers, you know, the Chelsea Record isn't a daily newspaper anymore. The, uh, idea of photojournalism has shifted a lot. What's some of your thoughts about the changes in local newspapers and journalism? Well, it, it, it's a different world today. I mean, everything is digital. So the newspaper industry is um, just not what it was. I mean, one of the pictures I have, it's not in this show, but it's of a picture of five men reading the Chelsea record in 
Bellingham Square. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a posed photograph. We took it for our publisher, Andrew Quigley, because we thought he would really like it. And I showed that to uh, my stepdaughter, a series of photographs, and I asked her which one she liked. And she said, I really like the one of the five men sitting in the square reading the paper. I said, why would you like that? She said, because you don't see that anymore. Mm -hmm. So people don't read newspapers like they uh, once did. Journalism is now um, digital, and everyone gets their information through their phones and their computers. Mm. Was there a particular loss in that, you know, when you think of the, the role of the local newspaper, you know, capturing the, the news that maybe people didn't want to tell the story? Uh, you know, I know since I worked at a really small newspaper, in addition to taking the photographs, I also worked in the production department. So I, they had a big process camera and I did all the process camera work. And then I would bring those negatives, I made a big negative 16 by 20, and I brought it downstairs and I put it on a machine that photo etched it onto a metal plate, which was then put on the newspaper. Then the newspapers would come off of the printing press and I got to deliver a route of newspapers. Oh really? So usually they were on my way home, but sometimes I do one. So you, when I would get to the little corner stores in Chelsea, there would always be four or five people waiting for their Chelsea record. So mm -hmm. you ask, how do I think it's affected it? I mean, the newspaper was an actual physical entity that came into people's lives. And we weren't the best organized organization. And a lot of times we weren't always on time. So when I would get to the little corner store, the people would say, where have you been? Where is my <laughs> Chelsea record? And, um, so, you know, th that part of it, an actual physical entity mm. that you could take home and you, you could uh, read Yeah, And is you were missing. relating with your readers in such a incredibly uh, in-your-face kind of experience, too. It was a, a remarkable experience for me because I would deliver the papers and my pictures would often be on the front page. And I would just look at people when I gave them their paper or when they picked up their paper and I would see them staring at that uh, photograph. And a lot of times people would say, Arnie, that's a really nice picture you took today, or boy, I really like that image, or mm. it was just a remarkable experience, the instant feedback yeah. that I got. Well, I love that we've got a chance for you to experience some other instant feedback at the exhibit that we're going to be doing. Um, so that's going to be going up uh, the middle of July through until September 7th um, at Gallery 456. And we've got a, a reception planned. It's going to be on Monday, September uh, sorry, July 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. So that's your chance to come and chat with Arnie Jarnack um, and tell him about some of your own stories about some of those photographs and hear his some more and get to meet the man in person. Um, It'll be a lot of fun and uh, we're going to print up a commemorative poster that we're going to pass out free of charge to anyone who wants one from uh, Chelsea. We might have a long list of people showing up to the <laughs> show then. Come on down. We like to give them away. Great. Well, again, the reception is going to be on Monday, July 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. at 456 Broadway, uh, a collection of photographs by Arnie Jarmack from uh, the 1970s and 80s in Chelsea. So thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing your stories with us. Thank you so very much for having me. I'm looking forward to sharing them with the, the community. Mm -hmm.